unfortunately, that, that those actions were met with deadly force. Now at five, police shoot a man in Sandy, killing him at the scene. Hear what officers say led up to the shooting. Plus, it's been a deadly weekend on Utah roads. We're learning more about the people who died in a crash near the Great Saltaire last night. And lights, camera, action. We step on set with some student filmmakers to see the project preparing them for Hollywood. Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. Hello, I'm Sarah Murphy. Thanks for joining us here for ABC4 News at 5. We begin this evening with weather where it's been pretty active today. A storm hitting Salt Lake City this morning definitely made a nasty commute for people driving. Here's a look at I-15 in Midvale from this morning. Now, it's slippery, slick conditions, not just on the freeway, but residential roads as well. I was driving in downtown, slipping and sliding all over the place. So let's check in with meteorologist Nate Larson for your pinpoint weather forecast. Nate, I hope your morning commute and your afternoon commute was a little bit slicker and clearer than mine. Less slick, right? So, that's good. Hey, we do have, uh, we had some sunshine that's out there. We still have a, a scattering of some clouds, even some showers out there this evening. Had some snow on the uh, driveway. Had to shovel off with the clear skies this morning. This was Syracuse. Had about three inches uh, in Syracuse. Clinton about four. Uh, so in and around uh, a lot of the northern Wasatch Front, Salt Lake Valley. A couple of inches of snow. Current conditions showing we do have quite a bit of cloud cover still out there. This is the uh, of colonial flag shot from here at the studio. There's actually a band of some snow moving into the northern Wasatch front. We'll show you where it's at here in just a moment. 34 degrees, though, is all we're at here at the airport. Boy, this is more January feels than March. Wind chill at four, uh, 27 with those west winds at 9 miles per hour. Southwest Utah seeing some snow showers mainly over the mountain areas, but there's been some uh, periods of snow covered roads as you're traveling on I 15 north of Beaver, south of Cedar City as you're heading. Uh, down into St. George, but turning into rain, of course, as you get into lower elevations. We have rain and snow showers across the eastern part of the state as well. It was raining. It looked like near Moab, cold enough now possibly to be seeing some snow showers there. And we have a band of snow that's pushing or inching in towards I-15. So we are going to see a brief period of snow move through portions of Weber, Davis, even northern Salt Lake County. That's on the move. Should be in the area within the next oh, half hour to hour or so. And we're going to continue to see snow showers off and on into the overnight hours. Lake effect snow could be setting up tonight for portions of the Wasatch Front as well into Monday morning. Kind of break down more of the impacts we're expecting from that coming up, Sarah. All right, thank you, Nate. Now one person is dead after Sandy police responded to a 911 call overnight. ABC 4's Annika Johns joins us live in studio with the latest update from police. Thanks, Sarah. Sandy police say they received a report of a 33 year old man going through a mental health crisis. When officers arrived on scene, the man had fled the residence. Police then conducted a search, locating the man near 116th South and 10th East. When law enforcement tried to approach him, he, present, uh, he presented a threatening manner, prom prompting one officer to fire. Sandy police say that the man died at the scene. At some point, something took place where the subject uh, presented an immediate threat to our officer and unfortunately that, that those actions were met with deadly force from our officer who discharged his firearm and, and hitting the subject. Sandy police continued saying that the case that the case has been turned over to the Salt Lake County officer involved critical incident investigation team. At this time there's no information regarding whether or not the man was armed. Back to you Sarah. We have an update now on the fatal crash near the Great Salt Tear last night. Today, we know the names of the people who died. It happened Saturday evening on the 202 overpass at Interstate 80. The crash killing the driver, 35-year-old Faye Lokita Kaho Fia Fia, and a passenger, 20-year-old Victoria Kayanea Thompson. Now, another person from that car was flown to the hospital in critical condition. Unified police believe they were going to a concert at the Great Salt Air when their vehicle and a semi-truck collided. Police say they want to remind people on the roads to slow down and drive safe. Never drive distracted. Pay attention to the road at all times. Make sure you're wearing your safety equipment uh, and drive sober always. The semi-truck driver was not hurt. Unified police say they're going to continue to investigate what caused the crash. Police records show the driver, Fia Fia, was in a rollover crash earlier this year. 
And it continues to be a deadly weekend on the roads. In Weber County, a wrong way driver was killed in a head on crash with a semi truck. Overnight on I 15 near Riverdale, police tell us a driver going the wrong way on the interstate crashed into a fully loaded semi truck. Both cars burst into flames. The wrong way driver died at the scene, and the driver and passenger of the semi truck escaped the cab with few injuries. Teen overdose deaths have doubled in three years, according to the CDC, and experts are blaming fentanyl. This trend is alarming right now, as high school students are reportedly drinking alcohol and using drugs less frequently, but teenagers can take fentanyl without knowing. The powerful opioid often looks like other drugs or laces less dangerous drugs, so it can right now kill teenagers experimenting with drugs. Tomorrow, actress Gwyneth Paltrow returning to court here in Park City. She's accused of skiing out of control on a beginner slope at Deer Valley in 2016, crashing into retired optometrist Terry Sanderson. But the actress turned business entrepreneur said in court on Friday that the ski collision wasn't her fault. The trial is picking up tomorrow and we're bringing you live coverage at 9 a.m. on CW30. And coming up, lights, camera, action. We step on set with some Utah student filmmakers to see the project preparing them for Hollywood. More after the break.